Hi guys and welcome back to Winners and Losers. Today it's a transfer special. We're going to be looking at the teams that have done the best and the teams that have done the worst in the window so far. As ever, joining me in the studio is Patrick Van Straten. Pato, who are we kicking it off with? We have to start with Chelsea. Unfortunately, on the blue side of London, they've had a great transfer window so far, picking up Mishi Batshuayi and N'Golo Conte. Now, what do we think about this, Joe? Yeah, N'Golo Conte is possibly my signing of the summer. Unbelievable move from Conte. Uh, 30 million pounds, about 36 million euros. Had to pay over the odds on his buyout clause because there was interest from China and Real Madrid, people like that. But they've got their man. He was dynamic in the centre of midfield for Leicester last year. And in a possible 3-5-2 system like Conte is going to operate, he could be an absolute blockbuster player. Also, Michy Bashiwai didn't have the best time at Euro 2016, but had a fabulous season last season at Marseille. He could really add something to that strike force if uh, Antonio Conte wants to play two up front alongside Diego Costa. We're not quite sure yet, but there's also loads of players left in that squad that are top quality players, Pato. Well, yeah, they've now got a really strong young strike force with Batshuayi, with Dominic Solanke, uh, with Bertrand Traore. These are all really interesting young centre forward options. But the question now is going to be, who do they get next? We know that Conte likes to have quality passing out of the centre of defence. He's always had that at Juventus with Barzagli and particularly Bonucci and at Italy with the same players. But who has he got who can perform that role at Chelsea? Now, we all like Kurt Zuma. He's an excellent young player. Andreas Christensen, they could recall him from loan. He's been at uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach. But maybe they need to get somebody else in there. We've seen Bonucci linked to Man City, but maybe Chelsea might be tempted to have a flutter too. But undeniably, it's been a fantastic start to the window for Chelsea. And Antonio Conte is looking like a real threat for the Premier League this season. Our first loser is also a London-based team, and it's West Ham, Patrick. Well, yeah, this is a little bit of a controversial one because the players they've signed so far have been pretty good. They've brought in Tura, they've brought in Havard Nordfeit, who's an excellent Bundesliga midfielder, and particularly Sofian Faguli from Valencia. They picked him up on a free, really, really quality winger in his prime years as well. They've also recouped great money for James Tompkins, a guy who doesn't play that much for them. They've made £10 million off Crystal Palace for the defender. But Joe, you have some reservations about their dealings. Yeah, I do. As much as you talked about how some of their signings have been really strong there, for Gooley is a great signing, they're way too public with their transfer dealings. And this costs them in the long run. They've already publicly gone after Lacazette. They've publicly gone after Bashi Y.E. They've publicly gone after Carlos Baca. And it now seems like they're publicly going after James Rodriguez. Ridiculous. I'm almost a bit concerned they're punching a bit too much above their weight. You see on, the t on Twitter the likes of Jack Sullivan, who's David Sullivan's son, one of the owners of West Ham, tweeting transfer news before it's happened. As a West Ham fan, that would worry me. If an opposition team saw that that news was becoming public constantly, they're just going to bump up the price, bump up the price, bump up the price, because West Ham ultimately will look bad. That's why I think they're in the losers category. They need a bit more of a closed shop at West Ham, despite their brilliant move to the Olympic Stadium, a few good signings, close the shop up, don't let your son tweet on social media about possible transfer dealings, Pattern. No, absolutely not. So West Ham, if you want to look like a big club, stop acting small. Next up, we have Manchester United. Jose Mourinho has made some early decisive moves in the market and I've got a very happy man next to me. Yeah, I am pretty happy. You're right, Pato. Obviously, as a Manchester United fan, the three signings we've made this summer, in my opinion, have been fantastic. Eric Barley, Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Henrik Mkhitaryan. The most exciting of those three, for me, is Henrik Mkhitaryan. A real creator, yeah. can play anywhere across the front three. He looks a fantastic, fantastic signing for around 40 million euros. Really good business. Zlatan as well, he might be ageing, but he's still a goal scorer. He's never relied on pace. He's a big personality as well. So to get him on a free, a real positive. And Eric Barley, if he comes good, he needs a bit more experience. I'm a bit nervous about his partnership with Smalling. If he comes good, it's a good signing. However, there are still holes in this team that he needs to fill. Mm -hmm. One, big time in central midfield. Obviously, we're chasing Paul Pogba for around £100 million. However, he doesn't pull that off. He's going to have to look at backup options. It looks like Blaise Matuidi could potentially be one of them. Would be a fantastic signing. Very, very underrated in that PSG team, the, the work Blaise Matuidi does. I would perfectly happy with Blaise Matuidi as a backup to Paul Pogba. And it also seems like we're linked with Fabinho from Monaco, the right back would add a lot to our team. We've obviously let Varela go. Now it looks like Matteo Darmian doesn't have much competition other than Timothy Fonsu Mensa. 
who is actually a defensive midfielder being played at right back. So I would love to see Fabinho come in personally, a right back and a central midfielder. And this window for Man United has been fantastic under Mourinho. Well, they could still recoup a lot of money from sales as well. It looks like Juan Mata once again will be pushed out of the door by Mourinho. And we'd expect to see a boost in some of the attacking players just by virtue of no longer playing in the restrictive Louis van Gaal system. So Depay, Martial, Rooney, these guys are no longer going to be hamstrung by that uh, idea of kind of recycling possession and not taking any particular risks. But how far will it take them next season? Do you think they're favourites for the title? Where do you think they'll finish? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Our next loser comes from the northeast of England. It's the Black Cats. It's Sunderland, Patrick. Well, it started very well for them this summer. They stayed up while their rivals, Newcastle, got relegated. But they need to do quite a lot of work in the transfer window. For a few seasons now, Sunderland have been in the Premier League, but not really of it. They've been flirting with the Championship. And that squad still has enormous holes in it. Last season, they got DeAndre Yedlin in uh, on loan from Tottenham at right back. And he was... Pretty decent. They also got Jonan Vila on a loan. Uh, Jan Kirchhoff came in from Bayern Munich in January and actually looked very, very good. But Vila's now gone. They haven't wrapped up a permanent transfer. Jermaine Defoe is aging, even though he did score well uh, towards the end of last season. But that squad needs an awful lot of surgery. It's pretty dire and there could be an even bigger problem coming for them. Yeah, there could. That reason is because Sam Allardyce looks like he could potentially, potentially be on his way to England. He seems like the massive front runner at the moment. The press are really bigging up a move. And if he leaves Sunderland, they are in the quagmire big time. The worst thing about that is, is that the FA aren't expected to make a decision for at least a month. If the FA, it gets to mid-August and the FA go, right, we'll have Allardyce, and he hasn't had the chance to build a squad, implement the players he wants to, like you said, they still haven't made a signing, they've lost Jan and Vier, and they weren't in the best position, were they, last season anyway. If they then lose their manager, they are in real trouble. I can see them as massive relegation candidates this year, especially if Big Sam goes to England, which seems increasingly likely. Everybody else seems to be dropping out or not have enough experience. And he was, of course, interviewed by the FA last week. So for me, I think Sam Allardyce will end up at England and they'll struggle to make signings because of that, having no real stability. Sunderland, you could be in trouble. Our final winner this week is a German club. It's Borussia Dortmund. Now, this is a little bit controversial, isn't it, Joe? Yeah, it is a little bit controversial because obviously they've sold some of their star names. However, in my book, it's real ambition to sell players who don't want to be there, whether or not they're your best players, and buy players in who are young, effective, hungry. The likes of Emre Moore they've bought in, uh, of course, Usman Dembele, Rafael Guerrero. These are some of the best young talents in the world. And you've got to take your hats off to Bristol Dortmund for being brave enough to go, you know what, Mats Hummels will take 42 million euros for you. We'll take 40 million euros for Mkhitaryan, we'll take 30 million uh, euros for Gundogan. These are established names and we'll bring in youngsters who are going to be hungry, they're talented, they're quite raw still, particularly Usman Dembele. However, everybody knows what a prospect he is. It's very exciting times for Borussia Dortmund. I really like some of the transfers they've made so far. Yeah, and it's good to have some of these contract situations sorted out as well. Hummels has been sort of flirting with the transfer for a few years. Gundogan has been signing one-year extensions. Mkhitaryan was in the last year of his contract anyway. So to have those issues resolved is very, very good. Now, we were a bit worried about the lack of experience in some of these signings they're bringing in. Moore is 18, Dembele is very young, Rafael Guerrero is very young, though now a European Championship winner. But they've supplemented that with some slightly more experienced players. Sebastian Rorda has come in, Mark Bartra, uh, Mario Goetze looks like he's on his way. And these are players who, though young, do have some experience at the highest level. In addition, selling those three big guys has enabled them to keep some of their other stars. So Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, it doesn't look like he'll be leaving. And Julian Weigl as well looks like this, the future of that midfield. And with Bayern Munich in transition this season to a new coach, it could mean that this was a good time for Dortmund to sell and create a new squad in the image that Thomas Tuchel wants. So, will Borussia Dortmund manage to overcome Bayern Munich this season? Do you think they can win the league and how far can they go in the Champions League? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Our final loser is another English side and it's Alan Pardew's Crystal Palace pattern. Yes, they have big problems and once again they followed the Pardew model of overpaying for British players. They got James Tompkins in for £10 million. They brought in Andros Townsend for £13 million. Now, I don't really see these transfers making a great deal of difference to the side. Steve Mondonda uh, for a very, very cheap price or possibly a free. There are conflicting reports. 
Uh, that seems like really good business because they've struggled in the goalkeeping position over the last few seasons. But they still need a striker. They're stuck with Connor Wickham and they've sold Dwight Gale to Newcastle. They still need a defensive midfielder. They don't seem to fancy Yedinak there and Johan Kabay doesn't do nearly enough work. They still seem to be following this pattern of buying quick young wingers. Yeah, he of course loves a quick young winger. Yannick Balassi being a classic example. Probably should have sold Yannick Balassi actually after his fantastic 2014-15 season when Tottenham Hotspur were offering around £20 million. Should have got him off the books because since then his ability has started to wane. And now he's dipped his hand back in his transfer bucket, picked out another Englishman and it's Andros Townsend from Newcastle United for £13 million. He's a good player but the value is questionable. This is a player who's now in the championship. Of course he only signed last season for Newcastle so he had a long contract. However, when the, in, the, in this window the likes of Victor Wanyama are moving for £11.5 million, you've got to question when you're spending £13 million on uh, Andros Townsend and £10 million on James Tompkins. James Tompkins is a backup for West Ham. Probably not at that level, I would suggest, anymore. He was a champion, fantastic player in the Championship. Questions can be asked, though, whether he was up to, this, up to the standard in the Premier League. He's, of course, Pardew as well, offering £30 million for uh, Christian Benteke. Now, we know Christian Benteke hasn't had the best time at Liverpool, I think it's fair to say. Moved for 35 in the first place from Aston Villa, and it now looks like Jurgen Klopp must be rubbing his hands at the thought of Pardew paying £30 million for Christian Benteke because nobody else would be willing to pay that unless they're a Chinese super club. And I think, to be fair to Alan Pardew, his transfers so far this summer haven't been quite up to the standard you would expect from a Premier League team. So Alan Pardew and Crystal Palace, you are our final losers. So those were our transfer winners and losers of the window so far. But who would yours be who did we miss out? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, why don't you check out our brand new strand Euro Roundup over on Euro Football Daily, where we look at loads more transfers, big teams like of Juventus, Barcelona, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, some great stuff over there. Click on screen right now to watch that. And as always, guys, please do like and subscribe. Catch you next time.